welcome back to the channel guys uh we're gonna continue uh, i guess modifying the audi uh, going further into the stage three area here we're gonna put a water methanol injection kit on it today um, really trying to uh, boost the octane level of the fuels I'm using here. In our area we don't have the greatest fuels and I've been starting to noticing some pinging lately especially moving into the summer months here they change over the fuel so um, yeah hopefully this helps take care of some of that uh, instead of getting a protein. We'll see what kind of go from there but in any event water methanol is always a good idea especially when you're modified way above stock levels just because it helps protect your engine. I mean not only does the lower intake temperatures increase octane protects from spark knock you know everybody knows spark knock's bad so spark knock no more. Um, yeah so we're gonna dive into it we'll uh, try to be as detailed as possible for you guys and make sure you stay tuned hit the like subscribe button thanks. So the first thing that we're gonna do is install this new intake pipe and why we need to install an intake pipe is because we need an inlet for the meth to go. Little whale dong, big whale dong. Why can't you guys just make it the right size? This is a little big. Look, look, look how is much this is. pipe shorter though? I don't think so. No, not really. In fact, it might even be a little longer. Oh yeah. <laughs> just going off for like. Well, we got the uh, the methanol pipe in, and uh, it actually took us uh, a little bit longer than we uh, anticipated. So uh, we are going to call it an evening and re-adjourn tomorrow morning. So we will see you guys then. Peace. Is it going? Yeah. Oh. Well, we're going to be continuing the install and the uh, snow performance methanol injection kit here. Um, what we've done so far is I pulled out this back panel. Here, we'll walk over here. I'll show you. We pulled out this back panel here, um, just this little kick panel covers up the wheel well and all that. And anyway, once you get it out, then yeah, it's looking like this is going to be the prime spot to mount this where we have easy access to take the cap off to fill it up. We also have our pump mounted below our tank so that way we don't have to worry about it uh, ever running into the issue where it can't pull enough liquid up. You know, these, these pumps are designed to always be underneath the reservoir, it's just how it goes. So. We're going to get to uh, mounting that onto the, the plate here nice and secure. We got these brackets here we're going to put on the back. So these will sit behind and kind of give some support to the tank and the pump. You know, these, these do weigh a little bit, but they're not crazy, especially when this is full. Um, so I think this will be enough to really hold it in place along with all the clips and screws that hold this thing. So we got both the tank and the pump mounted inside the car here. The next step we're going to do is we need to drill a hole to put this level sensor in, which we probably should have done while it was out of the car. But as you do, you do, you do what you do. So um, yeah, we're going to drill a hole for this guy and install it and then uh, we'll work on wiring after that probably. Japanese pliers here. Yep. Well, this is how this is going to work. <laughs> Literally zero need for this fishing line. Talk about clean AF. Thank you. 
I say it looks great, sir. All right, Mikey, what's the next step? What are you doing now? Well, I got this little stupid control module that has to be mounted inside that comes with weatherproof connector. Anyway, um, this box needs to be mounted inside. Um, it needs a switch 12 volt source at the white wire and then your uh, red wire is your pump voltage and your black wire is ground. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run a white switched volt, switch 12 volt source from the back. I got some power back there break out so I can use that um, and that'll run in the harness I just ran and I can just run my power and then ground the controller to the chassis as well as the pump and anything else that needs grounded then has to be grounded to the chassis not the controller so it seems like the way that snow performance wanted you to do it was have everything grounded through the controller and I don't know that I really like that idea so I'm gonna just make my own grounds hopefully it works we'll see All right, so we got a methanol line ran. We got a, all the wires ran through here that I need. And by wires, I mean one vacuum line, which is right. I actually can't even tell it's there, but it's right here. And that vacuum line is going to feed our pressure sensor for the, the control module for the whole injection kit here. So. Basically that sensor tells uh, tells the little brain box it comes with how much boost we're running and how much methanol and water it needs to inject. So we're getting that all plumbed up. Uh, really we're on the tail end of it here, so it shouldn't be much longer and we'll have a run. Eat your fruits and vegetables every day. But not like how he eats them. <laughs> what are you in there, Mike? And then 30 here. 30 is my power in, which I've got right, so there's my fusible link. Oh, well, welcome back. Yeah, so I'm uh, building a circuit here. Um, it's never wise to run high current pumps off the factory harness, so uh, what we're doing here is we're taking a signal wire that'll be a switch 12 volt uh, power from, for example, the amplifier I have in the back. And what that does is it'll flip this relay to then complete a circuit which will draw power straight from the battery. And uh, so that'll be a, its own circuit where I'll have heavier wires. So instead of relying on the uh, factory harness or something else, for example, to uh, supply power, I don't have to worry about damaging the factory harness or any of the wiring there. I can just use a, a basically a switch 12 volt source to flip a relay to just pull power from my own circuit that I'm making, if that makes sense. So. Oh, oh there it is. Because it has to wait oh, for yeah, the amp. Oh yeah. Oh, you can actually adjust the progressiveness. This how the nozzle set up here. Got our inline check valve here. Make sure the arrow is pointing towards the flow. This is the way the liquid will flow. This is your nozzle here. This is where everything will inject into. You gotta make sure you use their sealant here, this E6000. Um, all their online stuff says that the kit comes with this sealant. Well, it didn't. Luckily for me, Home Depot stocks it, so seems like pretty pretty universal stuff. But yeah, gotta make sure you goop everything up and kind of let it dry for a little bit, I guess, before you go ripping on it, otherwise it could leak. So. so here we got the feeder tube coming through the firewall. We got it routed down here nicely to the intake tube that we will eventually have the nozzle installed on. Gotta get under there and trim off the excess. We're gonna put a little bit of water in the tank and try to pull the water through so the whole system is work primed, if you will. Working. Yeah, so we know it's you know got fluid in it and it's ready to inject once we start going, so do it. Ugh. Yep, yep, yep. She's coming through. Alright guys, so the install is complete. Uh, we do have some minor leaks that I'll be addressing at 
probably tomorrow. I'm gonna let everything, all the sealant dry and everything. Probably should have done that to begin with, but a little impatient here. I wanted to make sure that the pump was gonna run and everything, and I didn't want to go hacking all my nice wiring apart to basically hot wire that pump to manually prime it. So I uh, just want to get a little drive in, make sure everything's functioning as it should. It seems like the controller is working. Everything seems like it's working. It's actually kind of cool. The controller's got like a little bar graph on the bottom that shows you exactly how much it's injecting along its linear scale. So that's kind of nice so you know, uh, you know exactly how much it's injecting at any given time or if it's even injecting period. So it's always good to know. Um, but yeah, the pump is working. Everything seems fine. It's just should have let that sealant set up and really get into all those fittings and dry. So I'm going to let that dry overnight, uh, take for a drive tomorrow morning and see if it dried or if I have to take those fittings off and actually redo it all. be kind of unfortunate if that's the case because then i got to drain the tank. But hey, it is what it is. You know, live and learn type of thing here. But we're working through it. You know, we're trying to figure things out as we go. This is the first for me. It's the first I've ever ran a car with methanol in it. So it's kind of baby steps here, but I feel like the install went really smooth, minus time, but it just took a lot of time planning out everything, the wiring, there's quite a bit of wiring involved, a lot of wires going back to front, front to back, maybe it's easier if your battery's under the hood, but mine's in the trunk where I already have a lot of power, so that's kind of where I decided to keep everything, as you saw in the, in the B-roll there, everything mounted on the side of the trunk there, which I think works out really nice, so... Um, stay tuned for the next video. We'll kind of go over everything. We'll maybe give the car a whole stage three review with methanol and everything and kind of see, you know, how the car runs and how it likes this uh, new upgrade. And I'm hoping it's pretty good. We have pretty poor quality gas around here, so this should really help bump the octane up and add some protection, definitely, because I feel like the car needs it. I've caught it pinging a couple of times, even on the 93 we have around here. I have my doubts, but this should help a lot. So. Stay tuned for more videos. Make sure you like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace.